everybody. So we have been discussing linear systems and uh, we went into the general theory of linear systems then looked at a few very interesting examples and looked at familiar examples uh, you know that we have already seen but from an alternate perspective and then we argued for why linear uh, systems a close understanding of linear systems is good because of this uh, uh, method of linearization which can be done even to non-linear systems and uh, so we we saw how you know with the help of a jacobian you can basically uh, you know use a linearization scheme and with the help of a jacobian say uh, whether uh, the fixed point in question is of a certain kind or not just from linearization right so now what i want to discuss here is how one should be careful with this you know can you basically treat any nonlinear system as as locally linear around a fixed point or is it necessary to exercise some care so today I, I want to show you a few examples where linearization will work and then i also want to show you how linearization can fail and what one must do to be safe okay so this slide quickly flashes things that we've already seen so we have this general theory of linear systems 2d linear systems x dot equal to ax plus by y dot equal to cx plus dy and you just simply extract tau and delta from a b c d and then depending upon the value of tau and delta and looking at this picture you can say what is the nature of the fixed point at the origin right so then the second step we uh, discussed is that of a nonlinear systems right i mean if you have a general nonlinear system you find the fixed points in the system and then and then basically shift your origin to that particular fixed point and linearize around it and solve the linear problem. Let's look at one concrete example. You have x dot equal to x plus e to the minus y and y dot equal to minus y. To find the fixed points of the system, we must simultaneously put you know both uh, both the velocities of x and y on to zero. So x plus e to the minus y must be equal to zero and minus y equal to zero. So the fact that minus y equal to zero implies that y equal to 0 and you can directly plug this in into the first equation and then you get x equal to minus 1. So the fixed point is minus 1 comma 0, right? So we should be able to use the qualitative arguments from before. Now you see that the second solution is decoupled and its solution is just y equal to e to the minus t and therefore as uh, t tends to infinity y of t will go to 0, right? So in the limit of large times the first differential equation Ah, so in the limit of large times you can solve in the first differential equation it just becomes x dot equal to x plus 1 because y is going to go to um, 0 and so e to the minus y will just go to 1 so which would give you diverging x so it must be unstable at least along one direction right so this is something that we get from intuition you cannot solve for x as a function of time analytically but you can basically already get all the uh, qualitative features just from this kind of analysis but let's look at what the jacobian tells us so we can write down the jacobian and then we see that it has delta equal to minus one and thus it predicts a saddle point and this is exactly you know matches with with our um, guess and we can all always check out the stream plot of this jacobian right so this stream plot analysis is only for the linearized system and so you see indeed that you get a saddle point along one direction it is going to take the system away from the from the fixed point and along the other direction it is going to take your system towards the fixed point right so the fixed point here is of course at not at the origin but it's at minus one comma zero okay so so this is the example which where linearization does work right we first analyze the system then we linearized it use the jacobian and uh, looked at the tau delta of the Jacobian and we are able to make contact between this Jacobian approach and the full direct analysis approach. Now let's look at a case where linearization fails. So this is just uh, to show you that you should not blindly apply linearization. So consider this system x dot equal to minus y plus ax times x squared plus y squared and y dot equal to x plus ay times x squared plus y squared. So if you put both both the stuff on the right hand sides of equation 7 to 0 so then it will give you the origin as a fixed point so the jacobian 
at the origin is easy to find out and what you'll find out is that the Jacobian is basically independent of this parameter a right so which has just <coughs> tau equal to 0 and delta equal to 1 so the origin is always predicted to be a center regardless of the value of a that's what our linearization is telling us now let us check whether this is a reasonable finding by considering a range of values of a and using stream plot right so uh, so uh, yeah so stream plot you can of course directly use for the full nonlinear problem right i mean you can uh, either use it uh, for the full nonlinear problem or you can use it for the linearized version but since uh, uh, it, it is pretty general so uh, in this case we want to use it for the full problem itself right so a moment ago in the previous example i think i suggested that stream plot will correspond to the linearized version but it, it in fact would work for for the full problem itself and of course you can also consider stream plots of the linearized version which actually doesn't make so much sense when you should use the uh, facility or the uh, the function in its full power so let's look at what happens as a function of a so suppose i take a to be minus one and then and then i use stream plot for this so there you go you see it's a it's an inward spiral it's going to keep on coming in and it's going to go it's a stable uh, spiral it seems like it's going to all these solutions are uh, are attracted towards the origin now but if on the other hand if i choose a equal to one and do a string plot let i have to do string plot there you see it's just the opposite in fact it's a it's an outward uh, spiral it seems like the solutions are all running away to infinity what has happened it's like um, neither of these is uh, you know what our prediction was our prediction was that it's always a center and do we ever get a center at all so if you put a equal to zero you will find that indeed there is a center which comes about so in fact the center comes only for a equal to zero and this is not a, an unfamiliar problem at all what is a equal to zero if you put a equal to zero it's just x dot equal to minus y and y dot equal to x which is the the humble harmonic oscillator problem the 1d harmonic oscillator problem and of course it is going to give you uh, a center right this is like the canonical example of a center is the harmonic oscillator problem it's a fixed point where there is no loss of energy and then there is it's neither attracted towards the origin nor is it going to run away right but in fact it turns out that linearization does fail here but this problem is one of the rare problems where the nonlinear system can be solved analytically. All you have to do is you have to go to polar coordinates. You just shift to polar coordinates x equal to r cos theta, y equal to sin theta, and then you make use of the fact that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So you have xx dot plus yy dot equal to r r dot. You should check this very straightforward, but you should check this. And then you can look at what happens to r r dot and write it as in terms of you know x times in place of x dot you put down the equation for x dot and in term place of y dot you put down the equation for y dot and then you do some algebra you know co collect terms in a nice way and then it all comes together in a very nice way and you have a times x squared plus y squared the whole square which is nothing but a times r to the 4 so you can also show that theta dot is just x y dot minus y x dot by r squared this is something that you should check right and then which in the end yields r dot equal to a r cube very simple equation for r r dot and then theta dot is equal to one this is also something you should you should convince yourself that this is true right explicitly put in you know in place of y dot you put in the stuff from above in place of x dot you plug in and so on and do the simplification the string of simplification and you'll get theta dot is just equal to one so this is a very very simple set of uncoupled differential equations if you go to polar coordinates r dot equal to a r cube and now it is obvious that depending upon whether a is negative positive or zero the dynamics is going to be a stable spiral or an unstable spiral or neutral central di central dynamics so the moral of this uh, example you know doing this example is that linearization is something that you must use with care and in particular when you have 
when you're sitting on a borderline case, like center is a borderline case, right? So is a degenerate node, right? If you're lying on any borderline of this tau delta diagram, then this is called marginal, right? So this is called a marginal case. And when you're at a marginal case, linearization may or may not work, right? So the predictions of linearization are not trustworthy if you're at a borderline case. But if you're, you know, deep inside any of these phases, then linearization will definitely give you the correct um, qualitative description, right? It's robust even for a non-linear model, right? So this is the take home message from this discussion is use linearization with care and linearization is not trustworthy if, you are, if your system is on a borderline case. It may work or it may not work. You need some other way of extracting this information. Linearization is not enough. Thank you.